Bye. Short bus debate club. It's a bus. Rolling. I can get on board. <laughs> Hello, I'm Darren Jolly. <laughs> it's time to get this short bus started. So let's roll. And on with the show. Hello, people. This is Brian Courtney with Short Bus Debate Club. As usual, Darren Jolly sitting across the table from me. Hello. Today is Wednesday, so we're going on the lighter side. And uh, we have chosen a topic which, well, to be honest, some of you may enjoy a whole lot and some of you not so much. I'm going to play a little ditty for you and you tell me if you can figure out what it is. Brian is jamming out right now. <laughs> Look at the Spider Man. Here comes the Spider Man. All right, so we are going to talk about Marvel today. And I know the audio wasn't real good on that because I was playing it directly from my phone into the mic. We have some really incredible te- technical stuff going on. So I apologize. I should have done it through the Bluetooth. But um, yeah, we're talking about Marvel today. And. I think Darren wanted to talk about Marvel specifically because Disney has fucked it up so bad. But um, let's ask Darren. Why do you want to talk about Marvel? I just think it's become such a peculiar cultural phenomenon, you know? I mean, like when I, you know, when the movies started to come out, obviously that's not the beginning of Marvel, right? I mean you know, Stan Lee and all those fucking weirdos that he was, you know, doing his thing with. Um, they, I don't know what kind of drugs they were doing, but they had some fucking incredible imaginations in terms of the comic books. But the way that it went from comic book to cartoons to, you know, like these weird, like dorks, you know, at home with these giant collections, like Kevin Smith that fucking, you know, sells his fucking comic book collection off and then makes his first movie off of uh off of the money that he got from that comic book collection um and then all the references like references every, every you know in, in all these different spaces here different spaces there i think quentin tarantino make marvel references a couple couple of times in movies um it's just this thing that sort of permeated our culture so much but as soon as iron man came out i, I just would have never thought it would have gotten to the point where like I remember somewhere in like 2015, my daughter starts talking to me about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, and just is going like she can't believe that I don't know everything that she's talking about. That's a typical thing when when a kid's 15 years old, when they're talking to their parents anyway, because everything is the center of their universe. But it has permeated every part of our, our culture so much so that there are these really weird internal contradictions that show up in it, but whatever, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later on. But a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, companies now, and, and I think this started in probably the nineties, it may have started earlier than that, but companies want to do co-branding and all of these different marketing campaigns you know the first one i can remember and it, this doesn't have shit to do with comics but the first one that i can remember that really sticks out in my head is um demolition man talking about taco bell winning the the fast food wars but mcdonald's always had like flintstone glasses and i know that's Hanna barbera um, but you know, they, they've always done these co-marketing things. And I think that that's so that, you know, both products get a bump, you know, if Product someone placement was, I mean, it, it's gotten to the point where it's just, yeah, insane. it's not even placement it's, anymore. Uh, it's, it's a co-marketing strategy, um, where they are, basically symbiotic well if disney is a is is owned by this gigantic parent corporation and they have you know something that ties to you know the fast food industry it stands to reason that they're gonna put that kind of shit in there and of course they'll take money to maybe have some cross-pollinating going on you know i mean it's not as straightforward as just like 
you know, like a rollerball where that's one giant corporation against this other giant corporation, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, but I, I was not talking about the, the nation states nearly as, as much as you, but I mean, just the, the fact that now it is everywhere and it has permeated everything. I think that that's part of it is that, you know, all of these corporations talk to each other and say, hey, can we, you know, do this and we'll give you this. If you, you know, put our glasses in your fast food restaurants, we'll do this and, you know, whatever. Um, I, I was thinking when I knew we were going to do this, I was thinking back and, you know, I read a couple of comic books when I was a kid, but as far as Marvel goes, and I, I didn't even know it was Marvel at the time, but when I was six years old, you couldn't find me elsewhere when the Incredible Hulk was on TV at night. Um, <laughs> the Lou the Ferrigno thing? Or? Yeah, yeah, when Lou Ferrigno was on it. And, you know, I mean, he was basically a bum. I mean, he didn't really have a job. He just did kind of like the guy from Kung Fu going from town to town, getting in adventures and stuff. But it was, it was Bruce Banner and he was, he was traveling because he didn't, you know, the media was after him and, um, the government was after him. So he was going from town to town trying to hide and he had to do odd jobs and stuff. And he always got into a position where he'd say, you know, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> um, but that, that was my first was real he, impression of was he here Marvel. Now? Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, the incredible Hulk, the way they portrayed him in the television show, I would say he was not an anti-hero. The way he has been portrayed in the new Marvel movies, I would say he's probably pushing anti-hero because of the fact that, you know, since his Hulk brain takes over and he doesn't really care, he accidentally kills people, you know, there's collateral damage involved when he's helping solve an issue. Um, that wasn't the case on the television show or even the cartoon that came later when I was, but they I do don't know, really like skirt, nine. They do really intentionally skirt the, the anti-hero versus hero like line with him because they make when Mark, I mean, the way that they have Scarlett Johansson's character come to Mark Ruffalo when he's like in his you know, weird space. And then of course, by the time they get to end game where he's like this dorky mix of, you know, angry and, you know, I don't, and they, I don't know if I, I don't know. Like it. It's weird, dude. <laughs> like, I don't know what they're doing. And I was always confused because they've done so many of the Hulk movies now, like there was the Hulk and the incredible Hulk. So maybe the incredible Hulk is Bruce Banner. Did you like Ed Norton? Did, but you, did you see that one? The Hulk is David Banner. And actually, you know what? I think David Banner was the dad. And maybe he was the one in The Incredible Hulk. Hmm. Um, no, but in one of the movies, they tried to clarify it. Mm -hmm. Really? And they said that Bruce was the baby and David was the dad. And that ended up being Nick Nolte's character, unless I got that backwards. Um, but that's, the, that's the Ed Norton one. Nick Nolte uh -huh. played the dad. Uh -huh. But was he David or was he Bruce? No, that isn't the Nick Nolte one. I mean, that is that's the other one. I never saw that one. I was I was confused. I just watched the Ed Norton one. I was yeah I, recently, but uh, I I got no idea. That was that that was the first one. That was the David. No, Bruce Banner. No, something Banner. Eric Banner. Uh, Eric Banner. Yeah, that was the guy's name. Bruce Banner. <laughs> it's hard when they run him so close <laughs> like that. He's Bruce to, Banner. I, 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 I don't, I don't. I mean, I know that his dad created him in that one. Well, right? see, this is fucking stupid. It says that Nick Nolte played Brian Banner, and I don't ever remember there being a Brian Banner. There was a Bruce. 
But maybe Eric Bana's character was Bruce, and there was no David. But there was actually a David Banner, so I don't know. Anyway, th there's, there's weird lines that are blurred within the Marvel Universe because they also do shit like fan fiction. Uh -huh. And I don't know well, how many of the movies. Kind of weird shit like that. Yeah, yeah, and Wolverine ended up with a bunch of weird um, fan fiction mm -hmm. shit, like that movie where he had fucking bones coming out of his hands instead of the adamantium claws. That was the origins one, wasn't it? That yeah, was the origins and I'm pretty sure that that was fan fiction, and that's why the bones. Um, I, I haven't read enough of the. I mean, like that's where I, I don't. I've never gotten enough into the 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 basis of it. But now the movies have gotten so large, it's like uh, it's like when I complain about the way that everybody interprets Marx. You know, like the 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 picture that people have in their head of of Marvel is bigger than whatever it was that it was grounded in, in terms of what what you know Stanley and those guys were doing at the beginning. Anyway, it's like it's lost. See, and according to the Marvel Wiki, mm -hmm. David Banner is just a fucking alias. Really? So I don't, I don't get it, dude. But well, we well, maybe one of these days we'll go and we'll pull the Hulk apart. You know? I don't know. It's don't, it, you know, and because you can pull the Hulk apart, right? Wham, the, like the Hulkamania stretchy whatever thing. Is that what you're talking no, about? I, just, I mean, cause the Hulk pulls everything else apart. So. So this is also maybe maybe interesting is that we're on Earth six hundred and sixteen, according to Marvel. Earth six sixteen because of the whole Marvel multiverse, you, multiverse. thing. That's see, this is where this is okay. So this is one of the things that really fucking irritates the hell out of me, right? Okay, so you have a Marvel universe where you you got Thor out there all the way. Of course, we we know that. Uh, uh, his home is destroyed now and, and whatnot, but there's all these other fucking places that are out there. Why in the world, when you have this universal position, is everybody still so heavily focused on countries? I just, I just don't understand why it is. I mean, like Civil War, you know, that you got fucking Robert Downey Jr. against fucking Chris Evans. And because Chris Evans, the, you know, the super nerdy, you know, I'm the good guy, uh, goes against the, the law and Robert Downey Jr. But he should have gone. He, he should have went against I the love, law. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm Because that was bullshit anyway. And I'm glad that he, I wish he would have fucking killed Iron Man. That's, but I don't understand the pretense like that. Those, those people, so like I get that, that Spider-Man was a dorky little kid and he was going to do whatever it was that Robert Downey Jr. told him to do. But everybody else like coming along, like we need to have these rules that are grounded in, and like you've had all of you, like over the course of 10 years, you've gone from, you know, having a world that's essentially your in your mind is, not connected to these other places and then all these fucking windows open up and you know you got thor and you got fucking the guardians of the galaxy and fucking doctor strange you know like on top of that where you're you know to where fucking loki goes into these space where like time is just this i'm scratching my toad <laughs> i thought you were really thinking i thought you were like getting yeah. really into the i just don't understand why how it is I can't imagine if a thousand years from now, if aliens come to the earth and we're all dead because we're so fucking stupid that we're going to have. And that's the record. Nuclear war diet, right? They, they come and they find uh, these two flags that are perfectly preserved. You know, they're going to look at them and they're going to go, what are these things? You know, cause they got these alien anthropologists there and they're like looking at them and they're like, what are these things right here? They got some, some nice colors here and some nice colors there. And this one's got, you know, some stars and some stripes and some, it must've been a blanket. It must've been a nice blanket that they were using. <laughs> I just don't so know. So you're assuming that alien civilizations don't have nation states then? I, yes, I'm absolutely. I'm not saying that they won't have political existences and, and sets of relationships, but it just seems odd to me that like, 
in these spaces, like where these grand universal schemes that transcend time and transcend, you know, multiverses and all that shit, like we can't see past, you know, a country. I just, it's just, it's in our head. It's a fantasy. The Romulans versus humans. Okay, you know, well, the Vulcans is like how they had started fighting in the first place, but we, we better not go down the Star Trek path. That well, way. the Vulcans, too, I mean, or um, the Borg. There's there's no doubt that they were using nation con, but that that's those those are alien. Okay, so that's in that's in Roddenberry's head then, it, well, because it's, it's the nation the, state that we're talking that's about. That's the world that they live in, yeah. And I guess, I mean, of course, that's. I just don't know how you can get to this point where you can transcend all these other thoughts, but you cannot get like, again, civil war was about this legal dispute. You know, there's these rules that we have to follow. No, we're not going to follow those rules. We got to go after Bucky and give him the, you know, no, Bucky's my buddy. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go save (laughs) Bucky, you know, (laughs) you know, So before your little thing about the nation states, you know, you kind of talked about all of these, you, you rambled off some different um, characters or at least movies Mm -hmm. from Marvel. Mm -hmm. And I've got to tell you, so Disney bought Marvel in 2009. So I thought fuck, Marvel is gonna suck. Mm-hmm. They're they're just gonna go in the shitter. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing the advertisement for Guardians of the Galaxy, which you just mentioned not too long ago. It's kind of a funny fucking movie. Dude. And I thought that's gonna be the biggest piece of shit. And it's more fucking bullshit Disney thing. You know, they got fucking Rocket in there, which is a raccoon. They've got some fucking tree character. This is gonna be bullshit. And mm-hmm. I loved both those movies. Yeah, they were funny. They were good movies. Yeah. Um, so maybe Disney didn't do such a bad job. Um, but you don't have the same nation-state argument in those movies that you do in a lot of their other stuff. That's what irritates me, though, is that you can have these grandiose moments where you're transcending those spaces in these very cool ways, and then you fall back into these mindsets. That but I so wonder constrained. if that's just because of how the characters were written for so long that they've got to kind of they've got to kind of keep them in that realm. Because, like, okay, so Iron Man. Tony Stark was rich because of Stark Industries, which was the company his dad Howard started. And, you know, he was the one that created Captain America back in World War II. So he made all of that money about basically developing and selling arms to the United States government and clearly doing research and development. On humans. Um, Was it really his dad in the comic books that did all that stuff? Yeah, that Howard Stark. So, That's cool, um, so maybe they need to keep him in that same sort of area, you know, because then again, they also, Tony ended up developing War Machine, which I hated the fact that they changed his fucking name to what was it, the American Patriot or whatever. The, Is that the, the the robots that went into the air? No, 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 not the, not the movie. No. So, okay. um, Don Cheadle's character yeah. was War Machine. Okay. War okay. Machine was a real character, okay. but they changed his name in like a future movie to something else. I can't remember what it was called. American. Patriot or yeah. the the Patriot, some some bullshit. So War Machine changed his name, but again, they're still sticking to that same idea where Tony and his family were rooted in the American military industrial complex. 
So perhaps he should not stray too far from that. I mean, in one of the movies, when they show his, basically how he ended up with the thing, he was in a cave in Afghanistan, yeah. right? Uh -huh. And that goes with your nation state argument. I don't think that they have to abandon it. I mean, and I don't have a problem with the concept of narrative continuity, but the internal contradiction of these grandiose spaces and the, the, to not at least, so like finally in the Falcon and the winter soldier, I know you haven't watched those shows yet, but in that one, uh, because during the time period when 50% of the people had disappeared, uh, a lot of people who had been displaced, uh, these populations found homes during this spot. And, and then when, Everybody came back. A bunch of them became displaced again. And the, there was some weird thing called the hand or something like that. I can't remember what they called it specifically. But uh, it was about this, th their notion of themselves was this transnational community. And they made them into an enemy. And there's just something that just seems really odd. You know, the hand is in, now that you keep saying that over and over again, I can't remember I can't believe I didn't remember when you first said it. So the hand, um, so Daredevil and Jessica Jones and uh, what the fuck is his name? Anyway, several of them get together and they fight the hand in New York. The, mm -hmm. the Kung Fu guy um, and the big black dude from Har Harlem. Um, yes. All of them end up fighting the hand. And the iron hand and uh, oh, I can't remember what the other guy's name is. Go ahead. Sorry. Somebody else fights the hand too. Oh, the hand. The, yeah, that's right. They do. They bring that up in the iron, in the iron. Uh, what, the, what, the one iron the, fist. Yeah, the iron fist. They yeah. Bring up the hand. But maybe I haven't gotten far enough into it to know whether or not that was a crossover. They had a black mask and then a hand on their face, these people, when they would go out and do their their actions, you know. And they it really looked like they were trying to, like, be a – like, it was like a militant kind of like a Guy Fox kind of thing, you know. Well, so the way that I understand it from all of the different shows, mm -hmm. and I wish I could remember his fucking name, the dude from Harlem, but – um. Because Jessica Jones fights him, too, and she doesn't realize she's fighting him until later. Uh -huh. But – the hand, the reason that they call it that is because apparently there are five heads of this group. Um, one of them is played by Sigourney Weaver, and she's basically like the top dog of, of the hand. Uh -huh. But then there's a dude from Japan. There's a little Chinese lady. Luke Cage. Luke Cage is the big dude from yeah, Harlem. Yeah. Um, there's a little Chinese lady. There's a guy from like India or Pakistan somewhere so they're around all that. Over the place. Yeah, and they they are the ones that control the hand, like, like a finger. Right, five fingers mm -hmm. of the hand. Okay. Um, and then the guy that trained Daredevil, Matt Murdock. Uh -huh. His name is Stick, and he's a, a blind guy also. Um, he has always been fighting the hand. And then the group that Iron Fist, wherever he's from, that stupid fantasy place that you yeah. can't really get to. Yeah. Um, of course, he was protecting that fantasy place from the hand. Because they were trying to gain, that was they wanted access to that. Right, because okay. that was the way for them to change light to dark or whatever. But in that, I mean, if, if the reason that they wanted to get into Kun Lung, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, is because if they gained power there, then they would turn light to dark. Then the nation state argument doesn't stand within that part of the multiverse either. Because they're just trying to be good and evil. But then there are some good and evil questions or, or contradictions. I mean, that guy Stick does some fucked up stuff. Um, and you could say that Daredevil 
is, is kind of an anti-hero too. Well, you, who did at at least in some some aspects of his job. Who's your favorite one? What's his name? Uh, Who's my favorite there one? Was a, there was a real there's one this one of the super dark guys, the Punisher. Does he uh, the Punisher. He no, he didn't really fight the hand. But see, he was one of those guys where he just made guest appearances for a long time in all of these different shows. Marvel, I think, figured out that they could make a lot of money off the Punisher, so they gave him his own book, and then he ended up with his own show and own movies and everything else. So, but accidentally, before that, he was he was just, just a guest okay. in like all of these books and stuff. Huh. But he was a badass, and that dude is definitely an anti-hero. What the fuck is the difference between a hero and anti-hero? I don't know. I mean, because, again, and this guy isn't Marvel, but I've been told Batman is an anti-hero. Um, to me, Batman doesn't do anything wrong. I mean, you know, he makes sure to try and protect the innocent. There's no collateral damage. He's not killing people. Like, if, if he could blow up a room because the Joker's in it and there's innocent people there, he's not going to do that. The Punisher might. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. He's going to have less of a moral quandary than Batman is. Right, because he figures finally it's done. And why are those people in that room if they're so fucking innocent? Which is a question I would ask. Um, Innocence is a complicated. So I don't know I don't know if there is such a thing as an anti-hero. For that matter, actually, I don't know if there's a such thing as a hero or a superhero anyway. I mean, you're either a hero or you're not. Just because you have fucking superpowers, I don't think that that should call you a superhero. And if that's the case, then neither Tony Stark or Batman. nor Batman are superheroes. They're just fucking heroes with money. Or the, the that's yeah. true too. Yeah, he's he a bad just motherfucker. yeah. Luke Cage has he got superpowers? Luke Howard, uh, yeah, Luke Cage has powers. He's got skin that is like impenetrable, and he's fucking strong as a motherfucker. So bullets just bounce off of him. Yeah, like in the show that they did on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, somehow he got shot. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't do surgery on him to get the shotgun <laughs> uh, pellets out of him because the scalpel kept breaking. <laughs> well, how the fuck did the bullets go in there? I don't know. The physics of things like this don't always stand up. No. How in the fuck did How in the fuck did Netflix get all that shit going and then fucking Disney? Because they Disney ended up getting them all because they bought everything. Well, because Disney had the master rights because they're Marvel. Uh -huh. Um. There are some things that still stand outside, though, right now, like in Sony's hands, right? Like the Spider-Man. Yeah, and still, that all yeah. has to do with weird distribution things and who decided to write it to begin with. Because Netflix said that they were going to do the shows. Yeah. So that's why they were on Netflix. But then, and I think they're still on Netflix. I don't know for sure. I haven't looked. Uh, I was looking for that. I just didn't get it out of curiosity. And I didn't, I didn't Not there? there. Uh -huh. Um. Because a lot of times that shit will show up on, like, fucking HBO or, or something, too. And that all has to do with how things are distributed or, you when know. They're renting them for a while. Yeah, like TNT will rent all the fucking stuff um, along the end game stuff. Well, and sometimes, you know, it says produced in association with. Oh, so they have. And so if there's multiple companies mm -hmm. that were on that, then, you know, maybe they get viewing rights or not, distribution not, or not, whatever. Not a lot different than the product placement concepts we were talking about earlier. I mean, it's different, but the idea is... Right. Are different. It's just everybody doing business with everybody else. Yeah. So what's your favorite uh, What's your favorite Marvel, then, you think? I don't know, dude. I, uh, I always liked Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Um... They never talked about him or her 
once I became an adult, but when I was a kid, that dude, Iceman, that could fucking, like, you know, cruise. Yeah. What making was that like show an with the ice man and the fire one. It was the Spider Man hour, oh. and then like they or it was the Spider Man Incredible Hulk hour, and the first half an hour was Spider Man, and then every once in a while the, the Fire Star and the or Ice Man would guest star, um, and then the last half hour was the Incredible Hulk. Those were cool fucking Saturday morning cartoons, dude. Yeah, <laughs> and they got rid of them. Um, but as a kid, I always liked that ice man because I thought it was fucking badass that he could cruise <laughs> making the ice path. Yeah. Um, it looked kind of fun. Wolverine is a fucking badass. That's because you're an angsty motherfucker. That dude. self-healing property. And maybe there is a certain darkness to it. I don't know. Um but that's like one of those things, you know, they say, if you could have a superpower, what would your superpower be? You know, and they always try to pigeonhole you and they say, well, would it be super intellect or would it be super strength or invisibility or could you fly or whatever? And by the way, that's another reason I fucking hate Superman, too, is because he's got all of those powers. So really. In theory, you can't beat Superman. And I know Krypton and Kryptonite, whatever, but it's just bullshit. I fucking hate Superman. And I know that's DC, not Marvel, but um, it went along with the superpower. We knew thing. a little bit of DC was going to pop through. So I don't know. Um, I like Wolverine. I fucking love the Punisher. Um, Daredevil. If I had to pick one, I don't know, man. That's a tough question. That is, I don't, I don't have a good answer for any of that shit. Sometimes, I mean, I, I like, I, to be honest with you, I, the, the Doctor Strange stuff I like because I just love time. Like, I mean, with the Mark stuff and the Hegel stuff, it's always going to be something that preoccupies me. But having said that, like, there's something that, uh, especially, I've, did you watch the Loki one? No. Oh, dude, that one's fucking funny, dude. That one's worth your time. But, like, he gets into this space where they're talking about time in a way that... You mean the show on Disney yeah, Plus? Uh -huh. Okay, no, I haven't with, seen it. They, they, they talk about time in a way where, like, I think Doctor Strange particularly, obviously because that's the cell that he's connected with anyhow. But as much as I love the idea of time, to be able to see through the moments of how time actually functions and to know, you know, the ins and outs of it, I think it might actually like depress the shit out of me to the, to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the unit, the ends of the multiverse, <laughs> to the ends of the temporal anti-temporal verse, you know? Well, I've always been fascinated with time too. And that's why, like, I love that line in true detective where he said, I'm going to see you again. Time is a flat circle. Um, but Dr. Strange is probably one of my least favorite Marvel characters. Um, that's okay. You're allowed to. in the, in the movies. I mean, he's funny. Um, but I don't know. He was just kind of a pedantic cock when he was a doctor. And then he really was a, f a fucking, yeah. I mean, but then like, what's going to happen to somebody like, that? I mean, good narrative structure. He got, he got humiliated. I mean, and he needed to be, you yeah. know, and that's, Life is valuable when you have moments like that that demonstrate, you know, they show you something to yourself about yourself. So he's your favorite. I think that, well, I, I mean, I, I haven't even watched the fucking new movie yet. I haven't either. But I, I think, yeah, because the the whole ridiculous, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, The you know, the 14 million. And then in the moment when he turns to Tony Stark and puts his finger up and, you know, I mean... The kind of responsibility that it takes for a person to be able to see through time, like, that would be a brutal, brutal, I mean, you would have to, like, know that this person's going to get fucked up, and that's going to get fucked up, and you would have to be so fucking disconnected from it, but you, you, you know that that's what's going to happen to make it play out. I mean, that's like the most incredible strategic disposition. I mean, that's like a, that's like a God's eye view of things, and... 
because I'm not a megalomaniac and I uh, don't have these delusions of grandeur, then I don't have any of these, you know, the desired or preconceived. Uh, you are nonsense. a pedantic cock, yes. though. Uh, yes. <laughs> not as bad as he was when he was a doctor, though. I mean, he was such a dick to that lady, dude. He really deserved to get his hands crushed. Um, you know, and just recently, at least to my introduction, things that I wasn't aware of previously, you know, I never even knew about Dr. Strange until that first movie came out. Um, so I don't know. I, I thought he was fucking hysterical when, what fucking movie was that where... Was it the Infinity Wars or whatever when uh, he made Thor go there and he kept like making Thor sick because he kept moving him from room to room in the mansion? And the entire time Loki was just falling through this hole. I, I remember what you're talking about. It was, that was And the, then he's like, well, what about my brother? And he goes, boom. And then Loki goes, boom. And he goes, well, I've been falling through fucking space for 35 minutes or whatever, and then... That's the beginning of the Loki show, I think, dude. No. You haven't watched it at all? That really seems... It reminds me of a part out of that... <laughs> it's were, in one of the movies, dude. Dude, Tom Hiddleston is so... He is so fucking good, dude. He fucking really makes me laugh as that character. He really is. Jeannie was she was all about him, and my daughter knew me so well. She I didn't go see any of the fucking movies in the theater, but she made me go see Doctor Strange because she knew that that would be my my thing. Well, in Norse mythology, Thor and actually Loki is my favorite compared to Thor, um, just because he's the trickster. Uh -huh. Just like Coyote is my favorite in Native yeah. American mythology. Um, yeah, I have a difficult time trusting you sometimes. <laughs> so, so, um, but I wouldn't call Loki my favorite either, but he's fucking hysterical, dude. And Ragnarok, he makes me laugh. Um, and just when the Hulk kicks the shit out of him and that one, whichever it was, Avengers Endgame, or I don't know, they're all fucking bleeding together now because I'm sure they're going to come up with the, another one the, soon. It was the Avengers, Avengers, where they, they he, and he finally takes a drink. Yeah, I'll have that <laughs> drink now. Um, so, but that, a lot of that could be the writing. I mean, because they all say some pretty funny shit. They, they do. Yeah. Um, Scarlett Johansson when she's sitting there at the beginning of that same movie, uh -huh. and she's like, well, I'm kind of busy right now when they put her on the phone, and she's all tied up in the chair. Yeah. She's like, okay, and then kicks the shit out of those guys. Right. The one thing I, I like, I like somebody that doesn't have, that just does it based on their own shit, too. Their own, I mean, she... Like improv type stuff? No, but she doesn't, she doesn't have no magic. She doesn't have any extra juice. She right. Just, she's just, just there, a badass. Yeah. But... So, yes, for her, she's like an assassin, and she kicks ass and, and does stuff. And it's not just because it's Scarlett Johansson, too, doing that. N no, because I like Black Widow before she was Scarlett Johansson. But Hawkeye, on the other hand, yeah, I know you love Hawkeye. lame, dude. So fucking lame. <laughs> All he's good at is hitting stuff and being on target. And I hated that line where they're like, well, how was retirement? Well, I played golf, shot 18, made 18. Was that the, the punchline? That that was your fucking punchline? Fuck off. So Hawkeye's not on the list. I don't have him up there, but I don't think he's that. I mean, you, you just fucking hate on the poor guy, you know? I mean, his whole fucking family disappears, and he goes fucking crazy, and just fucking goes like fucking kamikaze on every evil motherfucker that's left on the planet still. Now, maybe that's anti-hero. I don't know. Well, he definitely felt like he was anti-hero. I mean, when him and Scar, Scar Joe were standing on the fucking ledge at the, at, right before she fucking tricks him, he really wanted to ended for himself because he was feeling the weight of uh, a lot of his 
unique decisions. You misdeeds. Know? <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to say misdeeds. I just use the word misdeeds because it, a misdeed is just something maybe you shouldn't have done. It's kind of like a mistake. But it's all. It's gets. Then you're getting really dangerously close to you know like feeling regret. And I like. I just. I don't like the word regret. I think he felt regret, and that's why he was fucking I, killing everybody. I, 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 but there's something that I really like about what he did, though. You know, <laughs> I don't think he should have felt so bad. I mean, the people that he was doing it to. Maybe I don't it think he right felt way. bad about killing the people. I he thought he felt bad when I said misdeeds. I meant no. So I meant everything leading up to Sailor Rock, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and so. Perhaps something in his past, including The Rock, made him feel bad, and that's why he went and killed everybody. But I don't think he should feel bad for killing those people, and I don't think he should feel bad for being an assassin prior to The Rock, because that was his fucking job, and apparently he wanted to be that. Yeah, he shot 18 and hit 18. (laughs) Shot 18, made 18. Great. All right. Fuck off, Hawkeye. Um, I don't know. So you at least said Dr. Strange. I feel kind of bad because I didn't say anyone. Well, I'm just sort of nominally committing to something because of the time component. You know, I mean, it's it's it is difficult. to. I mean, and there's a lot of good ones. I mean, like Wolverine, dude, it, like seriously, like he's fucking he's fucking brilliant, dude. He's a he's a loner, you know. He, he struggles with a lot, you know, he, he, but I mean, like the struggling turns into interesting relationships that he has with people through those struggles. Well, I, I like that. Good, good character development there. Um, yeah, well, there's a lot of them. Stan Lee was a fucking genius. And a fucking brain, dude, seriously, just creating all that shit. Yeah. And I think that they, I mean... There could have been some LSD involved because a lot of them were developed in the 60s. But that was one thing that we didn't really talk about, and I kind of started but then backed off um, because we were having such a good conversation. But, you know, you said, why do they always do this thing where they tie it to a nation state or whatever? Well, I think that they try to tie it to whatever might be important at the time and use the comic book as a metaphor in some cases with the U S versus, you know, whoever that's not the case, but like the incredible Hulk Stan Lee actually said was based on racism. I mean, it was a way to fight racism. Really? Um, yeah. So I think that these books were used in a lot of ways for those things, you know, whether it be racism or fighting against the Nazis or (laughs) whatever, you know, and I didn't mean to go back to the, the whole nation state thing, but, um, what's there. I, I think that they used them for whatever may have been important at the time. I don't, think that the point that I would be making is that they need to abandon it. It just seems that when they keep circling back around it in, in contradistinction to trying to drive us in a positive historical direction, like, like you're suggesting where you're giving good moral thought processes, you know, trying to, we got to get over these, these spaces in our heads that are preventing us from, you know, seeing each other in a respectful and a thought, thoughtful manner, you know, I mean, the, the new Marvel stuff has turned into like a postmodern nightmare with regards to that, the way the Black Panther played out, you know, was it, 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 you know, which was a really cool movie, but it got, it just got a little over the top. And now they, you, you, a lot of that stuff is happening in these spaces. You have a, a an, an Arabic main character now, I think, and one of them an Indian main character now, which is fine. I'm not saying that it's a problem to do that, but it becomes the mechanism for the thing as opposed to like allowing the story to, to move that along, which would make more sense to me. But um, what I was going to say with regards to the world is changing the way that it's structured right now. Like the, sometimes when I like 
it's almost like they're trying to use it as a justification to advance, you know, U.S. foreign policy in certain thought process sometimes. And that, like, and like when you thinly mask shit like that, it really, really, really gets very, very, very irritating. Especially when, you know, like right now we're we're looking down the barrel of some pretty dangerous shit happening in the world that nobody is fucking paying attention to. Everybody has a moral position on, and we really need to be careful. Do you ever wonder, like? With a huge conglomerate like Disney, like maybe they really are trying to influence U.S. foreign policy and not because they want to make things better for any individual, but because they see it as a way to sell more movie tickets and DVDs at some point. I think that that's partly true, but I think there's another side to that too. In like that global police state book, that William R. Robinson book, he, he has a chapter on um, uh, the movies that they run past the state department before they release them. And they, I'm, I'm 99% sure that all those Marvel ones, you know, were, were heavily influenced by the state department. And they just really, that that's the kind of stuff that just inf- it just bugs me. It well, makes dude, me nervous. so Game of Thrones, not a comic book, really. Um, but you know, when that first season came out, and Sansa was standing out there when um, little fucking asshole made her look at all of the heads of the people, you know, that he beheaded. It just turned out that by accident. Or so they said it was an accident, but by accident, one of the heads looked like George Bush. Well, this fucking freaked out the government so bad that, and I've I've seen the episode, the George Bush one where the head was there, and then I heard that shit on the news, and all of a sudden the George Bush head was gone. So... The, the State Department or the government in general has some pull to where they can go and make a fucking show change an entire fucking episode. And I don't know how they did it, if they went in there and just CGI'd it out or if they actually, you know, cut around it or how they did it, but they got rid of the head. Um, so the State Department thing doesn't, surprise me at all no, i mean i and i know it's there and i know that i'm just complaining about something that i have no power to change but it just really when i see it you know and when i see it in a space like that where and particularly when they have like i said with the falcon and the whatever that other guy's name is that's in that show like uh the falcon and bucky <laughs> the, the winter soldier the winter soldier when they they when you you make a concept of something that is beyond the nation state. Like I just, when I, when all the stuff we talk about environmental concerns in the future and blah, 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 blah. Like I can see things going in one of two directions, essentially. Um, We can either move forward trying to come up with solutions for humanity as a whole, or we're going to end up creating these copolis, you know, these, these, these spaces where uh, bubbles where people are this group of people is going to be safe and then everybody that's not inside of those bubbles is not going to be safe and they're going to die you know and like i am going to be as altruistic as i possibly in this moment i want to be in a place where we're coming together making choices together as in and you can say that i'm fucking being ideal idealistic in that moment but you know the, the world is what we make of it you know and in, in comic book universes where, you know, we can dream, you know, these impossible dreams, you know, <laughs> why, why not? Why, why do we continue to cling to, the, to these, these geographical spaces that are essentially the things that are put, pinning us, pinning us against one another as opposed to, you know, coming, coming together. There's, there's one thing that, uh, Zizek had uh, in, uh, I don't remember if it was Thief in the Broad Daylight or something that Janae had pointed out to me, but uh, when uh, Fukushima happened, there was a time period when they were thinking about having to evacuate 30 million people from the Tokyo area, and they had to think of a place where they could do that. Well, because of all the ice, you know, the, the ice runoff, and they were thinking about moving them to Siberia, and they had talked to Russia about doing that. 
And I think that that's a fucking awesome thing. This war notwithstanding anything, because I think in the future when shit goes down, we're going to need, you know, it'd be better if we weren't blowing up pipelines underneath the fucking, you know, we'd be better to be finding a way to do shit together. So on that note, we need to come together. I've said it a bunch of times. Um, you know, maybe we can do baby steps and come together locally and then, you know, go statewide and then regionally and then nationally and then globally at some point. I can think locally, I can think globally, I can locally. That's fucking bullshit. It is bullshit, but I just, I don't know how the fuck we're going to do it. I But Darren has some ideas to to wrap this fucking show up differently, so I'm going to give you the Twitter and the TikTok. Um, he'll give you the phone number and then cue up some music. So um, TikTok is Short Bus Debate Club. Twitter is Short Bus Debate. Uh, phone number 720-334-ROLL. And uh, Friday we're going to talk about... Uh, in the, in the spirit of all this delightfulness, we're going to talk about Ukraine a little bit. So I'll talk about everything that's going on over there. So have a good night, everybody. I'll talk to you later.